I've never looked at my ball sack and was like, huh, I wish it was less wrinkly. I get my blood drawn out. Okay. And then they spin it down and then they take the platelet rich plasma and they give you six injections into In your, your Guys, we have Reno Gold in the house. He's a YouTuber, OnlyFans millionaire, and just a really sweet and genuine guy. We just finished filming a YouTube video with Travis Bryant from my main channel, but just wanted to go a little bit deeper with Reno. So make sure to subscribe to the channel right now for uncensored raw conversations every single week. Watch until the end and now enjoy the episodes with Reno Gold. How was it collabing with Reno Gold? It was great. It was really like a, it was a dream come true. Yeah. You know, we got to like have a kiss, which was insane. Yeah. And then I jerked him off with a bottle of Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> nice. yeah. It's something I never thought I'd be able to say that I did, but I'm really yeah. happy that I was with Reno Gold. Yeah. And then like behind the scenes, it was just really fun. So it was my first kiss and I just felt really fucking shy. Like I'm fun, like people put things in my butt in my videos, but like yeah, yeah. we don't kiss normally. So it was like more wow. intimate than I'm yeah. used to. So like I was definitely really, really nervous. Then obviously there's a height difference. So I was in heels. So like just the behind the scenes, it, it, was, sense, it yeah. was so funny. It was so questions so for Travis funny. Bryant. Um, <laughs> out of all the people you kiss now. Oh, like, Jesus Jeff, Christ. Mario. I'm done. I'm not answering this. Reno. Joe, like, Richard, Lamont, <laughs> Reno, Jeff. Like, where's my Valtrex? No, no, no. Where's my Valtrex? <laughs> that mouth has been places. <laughs> no, just between the two of us. Who was like the better kisser, Travis? Oh my god. <laughs> well, and oh, hey. Who was it? I mean, it's, it's different. It's different every time. There was like Jeff. Who's the lustful one? Like that was all lust. There was Mario, who's like my husband, and then there's Reno, who's like the fantasy, you okay, know, okay, fantasy okay, porn star. Because I was like, oh my god, I'm kissing Reno fucking gold, like <laughs> the legend. Yeah. Like I remember trying to follow his stretching tutorial, and I was like, I, I don't <laughs> think I'm getting it right. I don't think I'm getting it right. <laughs> but and then the, the, there we were in my kitchen making out. So it's yeah. just different kinds of kisses. Sounds like I won. Gays are like, also like more sexual in general, for right? Sure. Well, just so easily it's accessible. Easier. I was so fascinated by the that gay dating culture. It's so quick and efficient, bro. There's no dating going on. There's it's no, no dating. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, it's kind of crazy because it's like so emotionless when it's on Grinder. It's just like, how big are you? Do you have a, can you host? All right, come over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and then yeah. you show up and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, what's your name? As you're getting dressed after. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you know? that's literally what I said to start that bit. I was literally, because I was, yeah. my, my friend uh, in Berlin, he, he's gay. He yeah. was gay. I'm assuming he still is gay. You know? <laughs> I hope you're still gay. I, don't know. I, I think you've, you've had a run. It's, it's been good for you. So, um, you know, whenever he's, I was, I was staying at his place, you know, no, no, Tuesday, he just has like a, like a, Techno gangbang at his place, you know. And it's like I literally like sometimes he would hook up with a guy on Grinder, and after they were done having sex, he goes like, "What's your name, by the way?" He was right. like, "I'm Nicholas. What's yours?" I mean, no, great yeah. bang, bro. I'll see you next week. It's like, right. dude, I fucking love that, you know. Yeah. With girls, you usually have to like, you know, you have to like treat them well. I do this with Travis a little bit, but like, you know, you have to treat I them well. I need to be named a little bit me, first. Yeah, but like, you know, making breakfast in bed, stuff, you know. Like, so I think that's more exciting, though. Uh, for me, one million percent. Yeah. I'm, like I said, I'm not a very sexual person. So I like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, like I used to, to do the whole grinder thing and like. I found it really enticing at first. It's always exciting to be like, oh, who's gonna open the door? <laughs> like their pictures. You know what I mean? I drove all this way. I'm still gonna bang, but yeah. like it's like I don't know. Like I want something so much more substantial now. Yeah. You know? mm. And I just feel like that's just like it's kind of like empty and it kind of like desensitizes you. Do you feel like doing what it. you do for work has desensitized you at all to sex, or like how do you maintain excitement over it? Um. It's a microphone. Oh, <laughs> like is it even a? Just fine, ladies and gentlemen. Back to you in the studio, Rod. <laughs> no, I feel like I feel like I have a very healthy relationship with sex right now. You know, yeah. like I feel like I don't know. It comes in waves, you know, and like what I'm doing now just doesn't really like affect me that much. It's like <laughs> I felt like I was just like yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to come to yeah. What does your job still yeah. like leave room then for personal sexual um, relationships, or is that like you you're burnt out? No, like, no, 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 no. Just, I'm like empty. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not burnt out at all. I'm like very. I mean, sexual. this guy goes twice a day. Yo. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. The reason I'm asking that is because like sex workers, I know that there's like the unspoken rule that you never kiss or you never, you have certain boundaries that you keep for yourself so that you don't get desensitized. Well, I don't kiss I know, in my scenes, yeah. Right, right. That's, that's like, is that why? Is that why? Um, it just feels like really intimate and mm. I don't want that to be like the standard for like every scene that I do. Cause like yeah. some people, like I think they're really hot, but like I'm not necessarily want to kiss them on the mouth because it feels like really romantic. And COVID. And I feel like a lot of, <laughs> I'm doing it for COVID. <laughs> And, um, no, it just feel it feels really romantic, and I feel like 
Yeah, it's just kind of like something I would want to save for someone else. No, I, know. I like my butt. Oh, that's a different story. Yeah. My dad. <laughs> <whenever. laughs> like, yeah, jerk off scenes are much more sanitary. But I love. No, I love what you said about the you know keeping it for somebody special. But yeah, I feel. Really, <laughs> I feel happy with my work. I feel like no, no one or nothing's ever gonna take anything from me. I feel like I have like a. I'm in control. So. I love you seem to have a very healthy yeah. relationship with it. I love yeah. That. Have you ever felt pressure being on OnlyFans in that field to like be big or more massive? Like my penis size? Your penis size? Uh, what? I'm not talking about your penis size, dude. <laughs> Ego. Ego. Like, you have to be like, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so actually, actually, no, I feel really confident, but when I was a stripper, I felt like a lot more pressure to be really, really big. So I, I was like, w had way more muscle on. Mm. It was like kind of unhealthy. Mm. <laughs> I was like really fucking big. I was probably like, like 25 pounds heavier, but oh. like just like muscle. But you um, are muscle now. Yeah, yeah thank like, you. That's crazy. Thank you. Yeah, no, I was really, really big. But when I'm on OnlyFans, I don't really look at other guys' content as much. Okay. So I feel like, yeah. I do actually, I'm subscribed to a couple of people for research. Yeah. We're going on a trip, by the way guys, we're going on a trip to Mexico with Reno Gold with Levi, with Leo, I'm gonna put all their OnlyFans there, Jeff, like all these like yeah. big OnlyFans creators. I subscribe to all of them for research and I, yeah. it's been my Saturday night entertainment. I went 100 <laughs> days with no masturbation. Once. Really? Yeah, I did the no fat thing, but when yeah. I first masturbated after, it was really painful really? and I bled. No! Out of your yeah. dick hole? What? Yes, it was horrible. I was like, oh my god, what happened? Why? It was Because I think that something, whatever releases it, like must have like, Seal shut or something. So then when I orgasm, it like broke whatever was there, and Your I bled. Grew back. I, my hiney grew back. Like, it does. It is. It does come back. It does come back. Wow. Yeah. You know, some wow. people pay for vagina re rejuvenation. I know. Like mine did it itself. For free. That's great. That shit is bionic now. <laughs> That's so beautiful. <laughs> I love your vagina. What was the best sexy time, sexy time you've ever had? There was a girl I was I was seeing, and she had a visitor who locked herself out of her apartment, and I was in the bunk bed with her, and the girlfriend was there, and all of a sudden she was talking to the girlfriend, "How's your day been, not Jessica?" And it was not Jessica. And then all of a sudden we were on it while she was talking to her, and I could hear her voice crack while she was talking to her, trying to hold herself together, and then she came, and I covered her mouth while she came. That was to this day. <laughs> to this day, my best like sexual fantasy I've ever had in my life. Yeah, yeah. let's recreate that. Yeah, for your erotic. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, guys. I subscribe like to OnlyFans. We're gonna have that coming soon yeah. to a theater near you. Right. I'll be Jessica. <laughs> 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 on that note, Travis Bryan had to leave us, which gave me a chance to sit down with Reno one-on-one -on -one to go even deeper. Have you been on an actual casting couch before? No, I've never, never? done. I've never done studio porn. Okay, so you've never done that. That was not yeah. No, I always really, really wanted to do studio porn. Like ever since I knew what porn was, I was like, oh man, I want to be that guy. But but studio porn yeah. would also mean would you want to do partner scenes with people or? I mean, like, it's a fantasy of mine. Okay. But it's a fantasy I'll never act out. But you've never done it on OnlyFans, right? You've never done partner scenes no, on there? No. My goal is I want to be a podcaster. I want to be a legit interviewer, you know yeah. what I mean? That's why I want to actually tell the story of Reno Gold and uh, kind of like have some questions prepared in a more organized way, you know? Cool. All right. Here we go. People know your name, you know? It's like you're an OnlyFans <laughs> legend almost. You know oh my mean? god. I mean, the rest of Travis Cove is like the OnlyFans legend, you know, go. Like, how do you go from, like, how did they get, all get started? And how do you get on that? Yeah. Ever since I, like, first saw porn, I knew I wanted to be in it. I didn't. Um, so, like, when I turned 18, I just, like, became a stripper, like, immediately. Okay. And, um, But that was by choice. You just, you really like dancing and stuff. Yeah. You, you dance so well and stuff. Thank so you. Like, yeah. Thanks. I'm an exhibitionist. Yeah. And then I just really like dancing. So I went into dancing and then, um, you know, when I was a dancer, like, you have to travel so much to make yeah. the type of money that I wanted to be making. So when I heard about these guys switching to OnlyFans, making how much I was making as a traveling dancer, mm. I was like, it might be kind of nice just to, like, settle down and then when I go totally, on trips yeah. it'd be more for vacation instead of work because yeah. work trips are always kind of like harder when yeah, when right. it's your entire life and you're switching a city every single week yeah I so right. I just wanted a little bit more stability so mm -hmm. I changed to OnlyFans and honestly like OnlyFans like it really turns me on a lot like sending out videos and stuff yeah. like that and creating videos and it's I, I love it like yeah, everything, it's what I was meant to do. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. So it came from a place of, hey, that's something I want to do. It was not necessarily yeah. like, oh no. Because um, a lot of people, like now you hear the stories of people starting OnlyFans because, oh no, I can't pay for college, I'm broke, right? That yeah. kind of thing. So it was, it was like a mix. You also really genuinely just wanted to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. I think that's great. And that's why I see it also with you because I see mm -hmm. you have such a, 
when I saw you on the boat, where we did this boat trip in Miami, you know what I'm saying? And then like uh, you go off, shoot all your stuff in your speedos and stuff, and you go in like and shoot like some scenes. And I was like, you're really enjoying this, you yeah. know? And I was like, it's so cool that you know, because a lot of times we hear, and that's what I said before, like we hear have this stigma sometimes about people and like sex workers that it's like something. You know, like there's some shady stuff going on for sure, but I love yeah. how, how joyful you approach this and make it your own. Yeah, absolutely. And like for a lot of people, it is their story that like it they, they come to sex work out of a place of desperation. Yeah, but that just wasn't really my story. And um, I feel like I've worked, I've made it work for me, mm -hmm. and it hasn't worked me too hard. <laughs> you know okay, what I gotcha. mean? So, like. Yeah, did you have like, any like? Did you have any bad experiences? Any like shady stuff that happened yeah. when you when you were a dancer? I've worked in most facets of sex work, and it's mm -hmm. not it's not always easy. It's like any other job, but I think it's a little bit harder when you do have a bad experience because sometimes like um, it's just like a, a more like intimate craft. You know what I mean? And yeah. then also like yeah, just like you put yourself in con. con compromised situations and that's also another reason why I left dancing because I mean like when you're doing bachelor parties and you're showing up and there's 10 guys there mm -hmm. and you know what I mean like you're in a compromised situation and I have been <clears throat> fucked over before okay um so yeah like towards the end of dancing I really was like not loving it anymore I was yeah. like really ready to change um but there was nothing that like didn't make me stronger or broke me as a person. You okay, know what okay. I mean? So like everything everything happens for a reason and like I don't feel like mad or any type of way about like any bad experience that okay. I've had. When I was modeling obviously like you you were being sexualized, but that's part of the industry. More like getting robbed. Getting robbed? <laughs> yeah. Oh, getting, okay. Yeah, because okay. people know you're carrying a lot of money on you. Oh, wow. Yeah, like getting getting robbed or you know like people like Damn. Island. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Like, and gotcha. then I mean, also like in the strip club, like people are drunk, so they're idiots. Well, okay, from that though, because I really, I really yeah. respect the the craft and everything. Because in a strip yeah. club, my whole, first of all, the dancing is like I couldn't do that. It's like great the way you dance and stuff, the pole dancing, all that stuff. My question is. How do you keep your dick looking presentable while you're on a pole pulling up your own body weight? Oh my god, it's so hard. You really have to watch out for the balls, or else you're gonna tuck them like <laughs> in the inside of your legs and hit the pole, which has happened to me before. So you definitely you have to be really cautious of where no, your third me, leg is swinging. But also for me, to be completely honest, when I was doing modeling jobs, yeah. like without even dancing, I was just chilling there. I constantly had to fluff myself to still yeah. look good and big. And you're dancing, is there any trick or do you use like um, Viagra or like a, a rings, cock rings or something to like, you know? No, I used to never use Viagra, it kind of scared me because I was afraid if I used it when I was younger then it wouldn't work when I'm older. Gotcha. Um, I mean I use it sometimes now, but back when I was a dancer, no, I would just like jerk off, put a cock ring on, then like I said I'm a natural exhibitionist, <laughs> just kind of like yeah. stay. Because it, like, it's not even about the other person I'm dancing for, even if I don't find them attractive, it's just that the fact that I'm showing my body to someone else like mm -hmm. turns me on. Um, so nice. it's like, it's just, this. Okay, yeah, that's the thing. definitely. Because that would be, like I said, that's something that's really underestimated, like yeah. for a lot of sex workers. That's like something I couldn't do. Like I did my porn documentary where I actually tried to go on a set and we shot some photos and stuff and that's all good. Like it was, yeah. I didn't shoot a scene or anything. But if I were to shoot a scene, knowing that you have to be hard now, not come now, but yeah. come in whenever they, come whenever they want you to come. There's so much control in that, and that's right. hard enough. Honestly, it's hard enough for me to please my girlfriend and kind of have like I mean, it's like I've 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 got it down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like no, I'm just saying it's hard enough to please a woman like that when yeah. it's like all about you and your own impulse. But having somebody else like kind of dictate that it's it's really difficult. So yeah, yeah. I gotta ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I saw the first video I ever saw of you was the video of you getting scrotox. That was the first one? That was the first video I saw nice. of you. So it was a good start. You were off to a good start. You know, I was, and then I was a Reno Gold fan from that day on. Awesome. And I knew at one point I want to meet you and here I am. Travis Bryant for my birthday gave me a birthday gift, which is getting Scrotox in my balls. Yeah. What can you say about your experience with Scrotox? Like, what was... I loved it, but it's so expensive. Do we want to tell people, like, real quick as a preference, like, what is Scrotox? Yeah, so Scrotox, it's like the same Botox that you're going to put into your forehead, and what it does is it relaxes the muscles in your scrotum. But where do you put them? Where do you put it? Oh, you put you put it in your balls. In your balls. And it's exactly. like... Exactly. <laughs> they use so many units of Botox, it's like $1,500, and it's like... 
you have to get so many injections. It's like probably like 20 injections into your no, sack. No, no. Yeah, I mean, they're not deep. They're like superficial, so it doesn't no, really my, hurt. No, one of my biggest fears in life. Needles. Needles, yeah. I swear to God. I, tattoos is fine. I mean, I have tattoos here, obviously. Like, I'm totally fine. It, it's not gonna go deeper than, I'm sure a tattoo goes deeper. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, have you ever got Botox? No. It doesn't go deep at all. It's like just tiny. The funny thing is I've never gotten Botox. The first time I'll, the first time I'll be getting Botox is going to be my bald bro. I, I love know. that for you. And yeah, I feel right, like that's so journey. fitting for it's you. Such a, it's <laughs> so on brand for me. It's I'm like so on brand. open to the world. I'm just open for new experiences. I'm like, totally. damn. It's just like, I don't know. For me personally, I've never looked at my ball sack and was like, huh. I wish it was less wrinkly, or I wish it was like, you know, hang a little lower. Like, what is the main benefit from, from so, that you've experienced now? Actually, sometimes when I'm gonna come, my balls will get really tight and one will suck inside my body. What, and what? Inside? Yeah, he'll just like, he gets, he'll, he'll just hide away. What's his name? His name, I don't know. I think it's a Leslie. <laughs> oh, Leslie. Yeah, Leslie. <laughs> Leslie and Dustin. Dustin stays low, and then Leslie, she's, she's a little shy. She's so, a little like, shy, yeah. when I'm about to come, sometimes, like, it'll get sucked inside my body, and it's, like, a little Damn. bit distracting when you're trying to get your nut. So, like, I noticed after I got the screw talks that never happened. They were just, like, hanging low, and, like, it also, like, turned me on, because then when you're, like, fucking someone, it's, like, slapping them, too. Doesn't it hurt when it, like, slaps? No, it no? feels nice. And yeah. they're still hanging. Uh, for how long are they going to hang lower? Uh, it was, it was it only worked for like six months. Six months? Um, okay. I got it at cost because one of my best friends is a dermatologist. Nice. Um, get that. Okay. Yeah. So. So how how much how much lower are we talking? No. So I mean, like you know, when you're in a pool and it's like probably like that. Okay. And then afterwards, it probably is like down here. Okay. And then okay. it's like. Okay. I don't know. I'm trying to. Like, like when you're like really warm in the sauna and you know, yeah, they like yeah. kind of go down and then there's, yeah, there's yeah. the two balls at the yeah. end, there's no wrinkles. Oh, that's so beautiful. It's so great. Beautiful. It's, it's great. Beautiful. Who doesn't want those balls? No, 100%. Are you going to do it again? It's too expensive. It's too I expensive. mean, if, it, I'll do a YouTube video about it. <laughs> we won't like, do it wait, together. But, but, but question, <sighs> but you've done one YouTube video and yeah. it was taken down, right? Yes. Okay. Um, and I, I didn't even show the procedure, like it, the doctor's head was like, in between my crotch, so you couldn't see anything. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it took it. To, got taken down. I tried to repeal it. Um, they wouldn't. Damn. Monetize, they, yeah. They wouldn't monetize it again. It got like two million views. Like, yeah. The first couple well, months. I'm because I'm, I'm gonna do mine. I hope mine doesn't get taken down. I just want to see that. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why they took it down. But maybe just film your facial expressions and don't have like. Yeah. Like. The doctor only blocking your junk. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I think that was probably. You it. know, I, I think so it's it more like a document, more like a scientific. Because I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually doing this also because I'm actually curious. I've to, I've gotten circumcised. Also, because like I don't know, I want to see the difference. I'm like I'm interested about these kind of procedures. You're like a penis modifier. I'm a penis <laughs> modifier. I'm a penis modifier. <laughs> I'm about penis modification because I talked to Justin, who's a. Um, he's, I've met him in Puerto Vallarta. Yes, yeah. he's a he's a penis modifier. He's yeah. a everything modifier. You know, I did a podcast everything. with him too, and um, I I was wondering like. Is there anything else, like any other procedures? Because he told me about like a lot of things you can do for your penis, like uh, sil injections uh, and what he told me something about like a, a shot. Yeah, so I, I, I do the P shot. So it's the PRP injections. And what I do that for is because I'm performing a lot. So yeah. I mean, in the last two days, I filmed five full jerk off scenes over 10 minutes long. And um, yeah. So like, you know, so that's gonna make your dick a little like desensitized, obviously. I have no yeah. problem getting it up, but then it's like, I get my blood drawn out. Okay. And then they spin it down and then they take the platelet rich plasma, which has growth factors. Um, they take that out and they give you six injections into In your, your penis. dick. And they're very deep injections. Dude, I'm afraid of needles. Imagine yeah. that. I'm actually afraid it, of, it really hurts. I'm afraid of that. I'm not afraid of the pain, actually. I'm afraid of like the knowing that something's going to my body. Like, I'm afraid of a, the vaccine, too, for COVID. I'd be afraid to get that. Right. I'm not an anti vaxxer or anything, but I'm just literally afraid of getting a needle into my body. You need it. You can feel the liquid. I, I had a surgery, and I got, I, got a, I got a fucking... Oh, I, got, I can't even talk about I got an IV, and that shit, even that, like, kind of freaks mm. me out. It's so weird. I have a weird phobia for needles, so... Um, I love them if I know they're going to make me hotter. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'm like in my derm office like twice damn, a month. <laughs> damn. So what does it do though? So you get the pee shot with yeah. the blood plasma, whatever, the growth factors, and right. then it makes your penis yeah. grow or? Um, so it actually, it what it does is it increases blood flow. Okay. So it's going to give you more blood flow, which is going to cause your dick to be like, a, it's going to give it a little more girth, just, yeah. just a little bit, nothing crazy. And then um, you get much more aroused way easier. Okay. And okay. it's like, it, um, it's much more sensitive. You have yeah. more feeling too. Yeah, yeah, it's much more sensitive, so it like makes everything feel like more intense. Do you come um, faster too? 
Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and because um, that could be like it, almost like in because a lot of guys I've heard from, you know, sometimes they 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 come earlier than they want to. You know what I mean? I've, so. Um, Okay, but that's interesting. Yeah, so, and then, um, like, sometimes, I've always been this way, even since I was younger. Like, I get horny in my brain before I do in my dick. So then, oh. what it did for me, it's so crazy, it actually, like, synced those two up. So, as soon as I'm getting horny, I'm, like, fucking rising already. Damn. Yeah, so it kind of, like, I, I love it. I'm gonna <clears throat> continue to get it every How six How much months. are those? I don't remember. Because I get, I, I don't know, I don't know the real cost, because I get it at cost. You okay, know what okay, I mean? Okay, okay, gotcha, yeah. And every six months you have to go back and get the penis shots in your dick. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it sounds very tempting, dude, but honestly, getting the blood actually, for first of all, drawn from me freaks me out. And then yeah. I'm just a little, I think I just gotta like, you know, fight my needle phobia and then look into glorious days of a modified, nicer dick. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, like, just do it <laughs> if it's something you want to do. And I, I feel like it's not even like I need these procedures. Honestly, I just find it very interesting. I, so. Me too. I'm, I'm interested in learning about it. I don't yeah. know if I would do it for myself. Right. I'm doing Scrotox, to be honest. Also for a YouTube video, because I think it's funny and Travis yeah. gave it to me for my birthday. So totally. I don't know if Travis, hey Travis, if you want a Christmas coming up, you know. It's like a big you, gift. If, if you want to, if you, <laughs> yeah. Your wife treats you well. He does, he does. <laughs> you know what I gave him? What? I gave him a clone of Willy. Oh, you did? So he's going to clone nice. his, I'm going to help him clone his Willy. That's my gift for That's him, awesome. you know. So he's going to have a Willy and probably sell on eBay or something, which is what I did. I sold my Willy on eBay. I did a clone of Willy video and I sold my Willy on eBay. How much did it sell for? Uh, twenty seven hundred dollars. Shut up. Yeah. That's <laughs> and awesome. I, and I donated it to the wildfires in Australia. Nice. Remember when that was a thing before COVID? Yeah. 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 Penis is putting out fires. Have you sold your? You have a hair. Do you, have you sold your uh, clone uh, Willy? Have you cloned your Willy? I'm coming out with Reno Gold Dildos and Flesh Jack. Yeah, I'm coming out with a whole merch line. So I have like five shirts. I'm coming out with. I'm coming out with masks, a coffee mug, stickers. Nice. Um, and then, also your yeah, and then penis like a replica. Yeah, and then so you go dildos. mass production dildos. Yeah, mass like, production uh, dildos. So but then, wait, a, a mold of your own, right? Yes. Wow. Yes. And then I'm, and then I want to work on flesh jacks, like getting the butthole replicated. The butthole too. replicated. Yeah, and the dildos that we're selling, um, some some of them are gonna vibrate well, how do you call for an flesh upcharge. Jacks? Yeah, flesh jacks for men. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a flashlight for men. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, wow. do that. they make them like butthole ones. Yeah. Because I've seen like uh, I've seen like um, female uh, adult stars, yeah. and they've done like like Riley Reid and stuff. They've done their own um, like you know flashlights, which, yeah. which makes sense, you know. But you, you can also make a mold of your butthole, like yeah. your, your own. Yeah, you can. I'm so fascinated. You can do anything. It's 2021. Yeah. <laughs> it's 2021, <laughs> yo. Maybe I should do it. Maybe I should clone my butt too. You should do fun, it. You know? Clone everything, man. Clone my. Balls once I've go talks. But are there any other tips like um, besides from the shots? Any anything a man can do to like improve the performance and stuff? Because I've heard like you can do kegels and you can do like the what's it called like the um, edging and all these techniques and stuff. Have you tried that before or have yeah. you always just gone to like the totally? And I feel like I feel like the best thing you can do for your sex life is actually like limit. I don't know like your porn intake, like you can have like a healthy amount of watching porn, but then okay. you can go too far and you can desensitize yourself. So you always want to have a balance with that, oh. even when you're watching my content for sure. So yeah. like, you know, um, but actually, yeah. So I've like really learned how to use my dick because in my scenes, um, I do multiple cum shots without any clips. So it's not like I'm cutting and coming back a second day and shooting yeah. in one clip. I'll be able to come two or three times and like within five, like within five minutes. So I'll film like a 10 minute scene. And then the last five minutes I come three times in a row with Damn, no cuts. Son. Okay, yeah. Okay. And I just learned that like you edge it and then you like slide it down slowly to the bottom and then you don't squeeze or anything. And then it like, you don't come all the way, so you don't get the feeling. Yeah. And then, but come still comes out, and then you have to go and do it again. Wow, you should make a YouTube video about yeah. that. Just a full tutorial. <laughs> yeah. I'll be watching that. I'll get another strike. Yeah, oh you yeah, probably, you probably <laughs> don't, 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 don't show, but you can probably talk about it, you know what I'm saying? You think so? I, dude, I've seen, and that's also one thing I want to talk about, because I've seen videos of, you know, penis extender? I've done a penis extender video where I tried a penis extender. It was more comedy, because I'd bored at an airport and shit like that, and they went through the metal detector. It was a whole story. It was Wait, a whole story. Was, was there any metal on it? Yeah, for sure. It's like this penis is going to be put on the base of your penis and then it, it like stretches it. So with a stretch, it's supposed to grow over time. Mario, that's crazy. You want to do an airport? Yeah, so I did. I wore a penis extender for like a month and like for a couple hours every day. So I wore it on a plane. I walked through the airport and then they like 
they saw it in the scanner. I was in the Grand Cayman Islands. And then they scanned it and I had to explain to this woman that, oh no, no, it's just, it's a penis extender. And she thought I had some weapon or something on me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like explain that to <laughs> Did them. Did I have a weapon? That, that's so, yes, I do. Wow. Good one, good one. It's just, I just brought my gun. You know what I'm saying? No, but um, I, there's videos of a dude showing you how to put on a penis extender. He literally shows his willy on YouTube. Wow. Meanwhile, just me saying willy is, this video is 100% demand that's just us talking about stuff like that. Right. He showed it on YouTube. You can see his dick fully on YouTube. But it's not taken down because apparently it's some sort of, because it's educational or something. <coughs> Did they mark it as 18 plus though? I think so. It's got to be. It has to be, man. I think if you mark it as 18 plus, you're fine, but then obviously you're not going to get money. I've done a douching tutorial <laughs> on YouTube. I didn't show like me like pushing the water out. I showed it on my OnlyFans, but I did like a really raunchy yeah. douching tutorial on YouTube. But that's YouTube. still up? Yeah. Okay. But it's because I marked it as 18 plus. So you yeah, because for that. also, I mean, you, how do you promote? Because my only, my uh, TikTok was taken down. Yeah. Deleted. You've also had your TikTok taken down, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So sad. I know, I know I'd feel so I'd feel I was making ten TikToks every single day. But what kind of was it more sexy stuff? Like or what No, kind of it was like it was like jokes. So every single day I would be like, Hey guys, if you wanna ask a sex worker a question, like shoot your shot and then mm. I would like I was I was doing comedies like just yeah, like comedy yeah. stu stuff on yeah. there and just like telling like my experiences and stuff like that and did you have your only fans raunchy, link though. did you have your only fans link in your TikTok bio I think what happened is I put my Twitter I was like oh you know what I'll just put my Twitter yeah. in there and I think I don't know I think that's what because your Twitter is like that. very I mean Twitter also blows my fucking mind because OnlyFans, not a lot of people use Twitter to promote OnlyFans, right? I love Twitter. Twitter's crazy. It blows, I mean, I love it too. There's no restriction. I, I, but it blows my mind that Twitter was this platform of like journalists posting like, you know, intellectual content, like authors and stuff. Yeah. And now it's just like full on penis. I mean, and, it depends and, and who you're girls. following. No, for sure. For <laughs> I think sure. maybe your follows change. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, in general, it's just like, uh, it's, it's, it's open to that, you know, whereas other yeah. platforms, Instagram, dude, like, I had I have to censor. I'm gonna put that here. My last Instagram post is a modeling photo shoot in underwear. I sent I put censors now over underwear pictures because I had yeah. underwear photos taken out because just there was a little bit too much bold and it was yeah. uh, you know sexual content and it's meanwhile on TikTok there's this girl. You see the video of the girl doing a twerking tutorial. She gained like uh, she made like fifty thousand dollars a day on OnlyFans because of that video because it went viral. Oh yeah, from Louisiana. I, I mean, great video and stuff. But I'm like, how is that still up while? Like ours is just actually they're they're less strict on girls for some reason, and I've noticed yeah. that on Instagram as well. So like girls, like they'll be able to wear like these tiny little bikinis, and you can see their camel toe. Everything. But because it's a camel toe, it's not the same as like having your dick out. I don't know, but like yeah. the thing I love about Twitter is like I'm all for free speech, yeah. and I understand we do have to like protect our youth and everything. But for I sure. think they've done it in a way that like you can flag your own account as 18 plus, which I do because I yeah. only want I don't want people under 18 looking at my account. Anyways, yeah. um, so like I wish it could be like that on all platforms, but yeah. I don't know. Freedom but of speech. There's a double-edged sword with women yeah. in general, and I feel like I said this before. I feel like women get. I mean, there's. I mean, there's definitely in this world like women have. I mean, I'm glad I'm a man because I want to be real yeah. for a second. Women are definitely in a disadvantage in yes. many ways. Unfortunately, when it comes to general like wages, when it comes to you know just looking at the past, looking at the fact that they have to carry children, get a period each month. Yeah. There's definitely. Would you want to be a woman? No, 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 I'd way yeah. prefer to be a man. Yeah, same here. Women have it much harder. But sure. on TikTok now, I guess they get away with more stuff. So I guess that's only fair. It's the price we pay for not having to carry children, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to have a child? Um, I don't know. I go back and forth about it. I yeah. think I'll be a really great uncle. I think I'll be a great uncle, like yeah. a gay uncle. <laughs> yeah, a uncle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have a niece and a nephew, and yeah. I love seeing them. But like after a weekend, <laughs> I feel that. 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 Yeah, love them so much. I, but... It's just a lot of responsibility, yeah. and um, I feel like it could add an aspect of your life that you don't even know about. Like my friend, for example, uh, Daniel. He he get he get he got pregnant. No, he didn't get pregnant. He got a kid. He had a kid like a couple of years ago uh, when he was like twenty three or something. Yeah, and he told me that having a child is a feeling that is not comparable to any other love you've experienced before yeah. right so that's something we can't even like you know conceptualize so yeah. that's definitely something i'm open to but definitely right now i have so many things going on and i'm so free in what i do traveling the world like living in hotels interviewing people and stuff so i kind of think that could also if i now had a kid i would maybe hold a grudge against the kid for like 
not having the letting me you know fully explore this time right now you know yeah. so i want to do it when i'm ready and also have the, the time because i want to be responsible you know because it won't be give your it the life anymore you're not living your life anymore you're yeah. living for someone else like yeah. totally yeah um is it so what about what does your girlfriend want does she want kids yeah I, if it happened, I would find a way, but I prefer for it right now, not to happen yet. Doing more stand-up comedy, traveling more, having more fun experiences, and then maybe when I'm more settled, even financially, having more, you know, of a successful career, maybe more mainstream in stand-up comedy where I'm touring at this point, and just like established yeah. as an artist and comedian, at that point, or podcast, or whatever it may be, then having this new aspect, a new challenge in my life, you know, separate yeah. from my other endeavors. Yeah, I feel like the only reason I want to have a kid is because I feel like I want to give back to somebody. But yeah. I feel like you can give back to people you're in giving, so many other ways. You're giving back to you know? OnlyFans subscribers and all. <laughs> oh, oh, and then also talking about the future, we have a trip plan to Mexico. Yes. We're gonna go and start a legit influencer, Team 10 TikTok house with yes. oh, pretty much OnlyFans creators, right? Um, yeah. yeah, so it's guys from all platforms. It's the event is called Utopia, produced by Jake Resnickow and hosted by Reno Gold. And um, so we're gonna have a content house. We're bringing in ten creators, and they're gonna be guys from all over the world. We have guys from Amsterdam, guys from Germany, guys yeah. from like Mexico, from all over the world. And it's a two-step COVID-tested um, event, and they have actually done one in Pennsylvania already. They came back. Um, with no COVID cases because everyone got tested after as well. Yeah. Um, if someone came up with COVID and they were riding in a car with someone else, they turned the whole car away. So it's like they're very safe with COVID and um, yeah, it's going to be awesome and it's going to be so cool to connect with guys from all over the world yeah. and create content. I'm excited for this. I'm, I'm not excited. I'm not sure how that's going to all turn out, but I'm just excited to be in a field with meeting new people again and stuff, you know, and also yeah. these creators. I've seen, I find it so interesting to meet people I've met I've only seen online, you know, like yeah. like Levi, like Leo, all these people, yeah. and then meeting them in person, actually connecting with them, because it's so interesting how some people like they're so different in real life than you would see because you look at pictures most of the time, you know, and you you yeah. don't see their personality, so it's totally. it's really cool. It's been really cool getting to know you as well for that reason. It's been you know? really cool. Yeah. yeah, nice. And also, I mean, also I'm gonna be going to maybe I already am in Miami. Yeah. So you know, a lot of a lot of things are happening. I'm how really excited, and yeah. I, I can't wait because. I'm hoping this content house goes well and we can do more in the future. Because that's like you know? a business model for you as well, right? You thought about like doing some sort of content house for OnlyFans? Because I think it's yeah. only makes sense for guys too, you know? Yeah, so I, I want to get like, I'm looking at getting a house in Miami and um, I would love to just have like a rotating roster of guys because that yeah. would just be great for my page. For and sure, I think yeah. like, I just like being around other creators that inspires me. Like yeah. whenever I'm around you guys, I go home and I'm like just thinking of videos and thinking yeah. of other things 100%. I can do. That's know? what I missed most during COVID was just the, not even collaborating with people or getting something from them. It's more like just being around people that kind of give you that little like incentive or like spark to think outside the box or think in a, yeah. in a new way. How do you feel like about a lot of these OnlyFans guys? The last time you shot with was Leo, right? Yeah. The, the blonde kid who looks like a freaking angel. Oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make Leo that. is my dream. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm He's gonna also, guys, Leo. by the way, subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna have podcasts with a lot of these guys too, I'm assuming. Um, but most of these guys are straight, right? Yeah. How, and, how do you feel like, cause there's a big debate in like, uh, uh, in like, yeah, with like straight guys being in uh, adult film, like mainly pleasing a gay audience, right? Basically gay for pay for OnlyFans creators. Yeah. Do you have a, what's your opinion on I that? I have so much to say about this. <laughs> I've actually made a whole YouTube video about it before. Okay, and okay. like, I hate when I read comments under your page and it's like, he's using the gay community um, for money and he's appropriating our culture and mm -hmm. for myself I really don't see it that way because I see you as an ally and you're like just be yourself if, if you want to wear speedos if you want to touch other guys you don't have to put a label on it like just like live your life and have fun and that's yeah. what you want to do and he genuinely enjoys it and I also wanted like you know, that's all something I want to not do only because you know I, that's what gay people want to hear but it's also yeah. something I really want straight people to hear you know yeah. what I mean because I in my hometown I've heard I've, there's so many dudes who like are so when it comes to being close to men are so and i was the same are so hesitant and like blocked in a way you know and yeah. i being able to open up to somebody like travis bryan in that way has brought an aspect to my life that makes me so happy you know yeah and i'm just afraid that a lot of straight guys are so afraid of being labeled as gay that they don't even allow it's not even about hooking up with guys it's just not even allowing male close friendships or relationships or love into your life from other men, you know? Right. And that's something I really, I really stand behind, yeah.
That's a gay. No I'm kidding. <laughs> so gay, dude. The but also, I think the reason. I think the reason. I like all of the top male creators on OnlyFans. Like really, like besides myself, really, like all of them are straight. And the reason why they're all straight is because they're not doing it for sex. Mm -hmm. They're doing it to have a creative outlet, to do other things, but if your only drive is sex, you're not going to make it anywhere in this industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you can have a, a good time, but you're not going to make the money like these guys are making because yeah. they come from a business standpoint, not like they're not just thinking so with their dick. it's more professional, right? Yeah, they're, so they're, they're much more professional. They're a bit disconnected from the whole sex thing, even though they're in that field, it's yeah. more like a job, right? Yeah. I can see that, I can see that. So I think, I think that's why they go, that's why they're more successful is because they see it more of a business than a hookup. And do you feel like, have you felt more comfortable, like, uh, or have you found it easier to work with straight guys or g because of that, like w in, in the creator field or? Um, I don't really care. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty easy working with both for myself. Can you tell a difference though, when you shoot a scene with a straight guy or a gay guy? Um, in terms of how they, how no, they it act, depends. It, so know? like Le Leo's straight, but holy fuck just like hard the whole time yeah and then i mean like other guys i've shot with like they can't get it up for anything i give them mm. two viagras they can't get it up and like then at that point i'm just kind of like this like sucks you know what i mean i so, get like, the pressure though i think it's yeah. maybe not even about like i think uh, honestly if i was on an adult set even if i was surrounded by three gorgeous women it'd be so hard to do that just performance anxiety is something i've dealt with in my personal sex life even you know because i want to be like good for people i want to always perform the best in my in every aspect of my life so i always put a lot of pressure on myself so I feel like if it's actually my job and people are like expecting me to do this now, that can be hard because sometimes yeah. your dick is so psychological too. You know, oh, it's yeah. such a psych game. So uh, also, I feel like everybody is struggling with like erection, erectile dysfunction or something. You know, people you know get their testosterone check. It's like 99% literally just psychological. Yeah. You know, you got to do meditation or something. Just be more comfortable with yourself or with your partner. And that's just like dissociate, a thing. bitch. Come yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> For me, what honestly, what would really change in my in, like personal sex life is like once I didn't think about the performance aspect, but I just like followed that impulse. Yeah. Like every moment was just like, oh, I want to explore her body as opposed yeah. to I want to make her feel good. I was just like, oh, I I'm curious to explore her body. And then it became like a fucking communication. And that was just like, it's the best sex. You yeah. Know? I got to tell you a story, man. I did drugs. Something I've never thought I would do like in that way, prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. I did Adderall. My friend gave me a little bit of Adderall and dude, I told that story at dinner yesterday. I felt mm. good during it. I was so productive. I worked out like a freaking horse, but then at night I was so like easily um, upset and irritated yeah. and dude, I went to sleep and I had the craziest nightmare. I never had this before. I woke up like sweating. I had a nightmare. I watched this TV show called Lock Key. There's some dark stuff. It's a kid, it's a kid show pretty much. And I had this vision of somebody being back in my closet in the shadow following me and stuff. Oh my God. Have, you've, That's you, so you've, scary. you've done Adderall before, right? Yeah, I've definitely done Adderall. So I was prescribed Adderall from second grade until senior year. Okay. Yeah, and um, I fucking hated it. <laughs> and I always thought, like, I always thought that I was like this, like, really, like, shy person. Yeah. But I actually found out I was just like really overprescribed Adderall, and that's what made me so anxious. So then after high school, I feel like I really came out of my shell because I just stopped I, taking it. I, I, I yeah. saw some stuff in Adderall, and I, I always want to try yeah. things once just to see what is terrible advice in life. Kids, by the way, yeah. never try anything once. But I was open to it. I was like, hey, maybe it's gonna make me more productive or something, almost like caffeine, and it did. Yeah. And I thought it was so casual, but the drawbacks, the the come down, maybe it was just like, I don't know, maybe there's other factors. Maybe there's other factors in this too, and it was just like the day or something, just my mood. Or, but like, I felt awful yesterday. Yeah. I never feel like that. I don't struggle with anxiety, but on, but on Adderall, I felt anxious, man. Yeah, totally. It's crazy. And I mean, with drugs, like any drug, there's a give and a take. Like, if you're gonna come sure. up, there's like something that's gonna happen yeah, yeah. that's like less desirable. Honestly, except for, I think, psychedelics, not so much though. You know, yeah, with agree. mushrooms and acid, there's not no come down pretty much. It's the most constructive high. For it is sure. so constructive. It's it, and I was I was I'm blown away by how Adderall, like drugs like that, how common it is in the U.S. and how easily it's prescribed. When there's, a, it's a, it's a drug, and at the same time, drugs like psychedelics, like acid, are so demonized yeah. and so heavily enforced. W while you can just take meth, literally, from your doctor, from your doctor, and give it to your kids, and give it to your kids. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, and that's like I love the United yeah. States, but I gotta say, the prescription drug system. And the pharma industry in general is one of the most fucked up things in the United States. I well, you like. were saying like in Germany, like in Germany, do they have Adderall? 
I mean, they do have something similar. It's Ritalin, but it's not as strong. Everything here is much stronger. Like when I had a surgery here, they gave me like tramadol, all these like painkillers. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. In Germany, to get that, you have to. Li it's a, it's a lot. You have to be much more severe. I feel like mm. here you go, whatever, have like a broken rib or something, and they give you opiate, opioids or something. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's definitely something said, and I think it's awesome. I mean, it, it comes back to like the the lobby and like making money with that too. Yeah. I feel like in Germany, doctors, and I don't say that the system is perfect in Germany. Like, definitely, there's some some fucked up things about that too, and it's all about money driven stuff. But I feel like when when you go to a doctor in Germany and you have concentration problems, so you can't sleep. They don't give you sleep aids. They don't give you sleeping medication or Xanax. They tell you to change your diet, they tell you to do yoga first, do like the natural approach first to look for the symptom and to look for the root of a problem as yeah. opposed to just fighting the symptom with some medication they can, they can make money off and that's going to make you addicted. Yeah, so that's, that's such I, a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah I like, was like, <laughs> that's something, man, when I tried that, I felt like, a, I felt like, a, I felt awful. Yeah. I've never felt, and maybe I'm exaggerating, maybe it was like a bad day, but I was literally like, like uneasy and I felt like anxious. I don't feel that way ever in my life usually, you know, yeah. I, I'm very, I uh, have that, Pretty much under control, and I was like, "Damn!" No, it can it yeah. can do that, and like for the longest time, I just thought I was like, "Okay, I'm just like really anxious around people." So then when I stopped going to school, like yeah. I wasn't going to college, and I was just like, I wasn't in school anymore. I was like, "Well, I probably shouldn't take this. Like, I only need it to like study or yeah. focus." And I like like kind of got myself back. I feel like like yeah. I didn't have this anxiety. I was like, "Oh, I want to well, talk do you to feel people." Like an anxious, do you feel anxious? In general, now in your life, no, yeah, no. you don't. You don't strike me as an anxious person. You seem very chill. So like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm really yeah. chill now. So I really think it was just like being like prescribed like the Adderall, yeah. and I, I have taken it since. Like if I have like a really busy day, yeah, like I'll be like, okay, maybe I should like take one. <laughs> so yeah, like, yeah. like I've taken them before, and like they do the same thing to me. Like every time, I'm yeah. like, I need to be by myself working yeah, and I, not see I anyone. Every, you know? any, anything's a drug, you know. Like yeah. caffeine's a drug. You ever come down from it? But it's just like you know, kids. One advice to you, or if you're a parent. Before like taking do any acid. sort of drug, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> before you do any sort of medication, maybe really think about it and just because you can easily get addicted. I can see how people can easily get addicted to Adderall. Like yeah. even if you take it recreation, even if you take it like without ADHD, ADHD, it's like legit just a drug. I'm like, damn. I feel like that's not something to like mess around with. Like there are people who actually really do need it for ADHD. Yeah. Like there, there, I'm sure there's a reason sure. that yeah. someone needs it, but I feel yeah. like there's so many kids that just get prescribed Adderall for just being a fucking kid. You yeah. know what I mean? For like talking totally. in class, they're like, oh, they talk too much in class. Like, no, they're just like social and they're not interested in this subject. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, they don't need to be on yeah. Adderall. Like totally. it's totally. crazy. Free no gold. I want to thank you for being so honest with me, for having a great conversation. Much love. And I'll be back next week with a new podcast episode. Okay, okay, bye. I was crying in my hotel room for like an hour. I think it's a 1,000% chance that in five years I'll definitely have bottomed.